Well, I'm here in lovely Oxfordshire today. It's really hot. And the precise place I am is Linear Fisheries, the St. John's gravel pit, home to monster carp and what I'm after, tench. Now, you can target tench in all types of ways and manners. You can fish like a carp angler can with the boilies or the sweet corn, or maybe under a float. But to me, there's one method that's supreme, and it won't actually ca only catch you the um, tench, it'll also catch you the carp. There's the Magaliner, which I'm sure a lot of you would have read about. Um, a fabulous rig in its own right, but I prefer to fish in a method that I've slowly developed over the years, just bringing bits of different pieces um, together and it's really fantastic. But we need to start first with the basics, which is the rod and the reel, because it all stems from there. Everything needs to be balanced and I'll explain that a little bit later. The reel I'm using is an Akuma Epix Pro. Nice and simple, basic reel, never let me down. Nice and cheap, you don't need to go and spend a fortune. And as you can see, a brilliant line lay. Now the line I've got on there is 12 pound X line. It's a fluorocarbon, it's very pricey. It's about 12 pound 50 for 250 meters, but it is fantastic. It sinks to the bottom, keeps it all out of the fish's way and stops them spooking them. Now the rod, is a rod we recently developed at Drennan. There wasn't anything on the market um, for the tench and bream angler, and hence we've brought out the distance specimen tench and bream rod, which is two pound test curve, it's 12 foot, there's not many eyes on it, so it's fabulous for casting, but under the rod tip it's still soft and won't break short hook lengths of which we're gonna use. So the rod is absolutely vital, really vital to fishing correctly. So there we go, I strongly suggest if you're gonna do this fishing, use a two pound Tesco rod and purchase one of these. So we've got 12 pound X line and we go down, and let's have a look at the business end, pull a bit of line up. Well there we go, there's a strange looking contraption that I've um, made into a Heath Robinson uh, inline feeder. It's actually one of the latest Drennan feeders um, on the market, the largest one, the 70 gram, but instead of having it via its swivel, I like to fish it in line. And how I've done that is I've taken the body and clipped off the tail with the swivel on. Then, at the end opposite to where the cap is, I've just made a hole, and with a calder shock bead, I've just inserted that in, and then glued it in place, Araldite and super glue to hold it in there nice and firm. And then at the other end, I've got another calder product, which is a calder helicopter bead. It just has, has a little inset into it. I make the hole, and I push it in so it just locks in place and again I've arrow dieted and super glued there and to stop that cutting through with the line because you'll find if you use that direct with line it'll cut through and you keep having to replace it just a little piece of ESP anchor tubing and that's at the end where the cap is also to stop the cap flying off because it can do on hard cast where I'm really trying to whack it to its maximum 60, 70 yards. What happens is the feeder compresses on the water surface on impact and pops the lid off. So I've just run a piece of power gum, looped it all the way through, around the swivel, back through the other side, a couple of overhand knots, and just super glued it in place. And you'll find that will just hold it nice and firm in place. Can't come off now. Now you're probably wondering, all this tape around here, well that not only stops the body from smashing up on these distance casts that we're gonna do, it also prevents the maggots escaping really fast. If you have just a normal feeder, it'll empty within five minutes. By taping half the body up, I can slow the rate down, and that'll take mm, probably about an hour, an hour and a quarter. And that's vital, because we're fishing little and often. I'm not putting any free feed in when I'm feeder fishing for the tench. I'm just putting the feed in via these big feeders. And I've taped it up, so that'll take an hour, hour and a quarter, then I'll reel in and I'll recast. So I'm constantly having activity around my swim. And even if there's silverfish, unlike the Magaliner rig, when the PVA melts, all the silverfish come in, demolish your bait, straight away clear off, you're fishing with nothing except a hook bait, if you're lucky. With this, the cloud of silverfish all congregate around the feeder and slowly ones and twos are being picked off. And you think, hmm, that's not very good. But actually it's attracting the tench and the carp because they see this big ball, this big cloud, swimming, spot your hook bait, laying on the bottom, wham, have it straight away, hook themselves. So let's have a look at the hook bait. I've tied on to the end of the um, 
X-Line, just a size nine ESP ring swivel, and that just slots safe. And then we move down, I'm only looking at three or four inches, probably three inches there, and that's 12 pound, 12 pound X-Line once again. And it's vital you don't go below 12 pound because it will snap. Um, and also you need to use these short wheel clamps with 12 pound on a balance rod. Hence what I said earlier on, you need a two pound test curve or less. Um, rod at three, three and a quarter, you'll just bust straight away. So we've got a little bit of fluorocarbon there, so it lays nice and flat on the bottom. And then we go down to a tiny little hook, well, comparatively for this type of fishing, and that's a size 14 super specialist barbell hook from Drennan. Brilliant hook, my most favorite pattern. We designed these first for barbel, for fishing with little tiny baits in summer when they're tricky to, um, to hook, but Quickly it became apparent it would be a fabulous rig for tench fishing. I've landed carp to nearly 40 pounds on these tiny hooks, no problem whatsoever. And what I do, I form a knotless knot, and then on the tag end that you've got coming off the knotless knot, I just thread down three artificial casters. And to fix them in place, I bend the line back round on itself, put it through the eye of the hook, and then just get a lighter and blob it, and it'll hold it in position. So you've formed a little tiny D rig, and that lays on the bottom, and you get a real acute angle between the hook and the line. You might be able to see you there. Real acute angle. And you think, hmm, that's not a good hooking pattern, really. But what happens, I'm sure, is basically you're fishing with a giant hook, because this fluorocarbon, because it's very stiff, acts like the shank of the hook, and the hook itself is just the point. So it's massive claw, and it just pulls down into the mouth. And I'm telling you now, if you manage to create a rig that regularly hooks tench, and they don't fall off, you've got a very, very good hook on your, uh, hooking rig on your hands. Because tench, you, whenever you hook them on normal cart rigs, a lot of times they'll come off. So if your rig doesn't lose them, then it's a brilliant rig. And I've had carp in this particular lake at St. John's fishing this rig as well to 36 pounds. So once again, fantastic for hooking carp. So there we go. If you're gonna try for tench this year, or even if you try to try maggot fishing for carp, I strongly suggest you give this a go. And don't be surprised when the bobbin pulls up tight and the buzzer screams off. This is a fantastic rig.